Well, 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 if it isn't Rucker McGrory potentially going down to the baby Pittsburgh Penguins rather than starting with the big club straight out of camp. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Arison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thanks for choosing to make Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. Most of all, though, we just love and appreciate your support. Tonight's episode, like I said, we are going to perhaps take a slight detour off of the usual Jets updates and talk about some of our other former Jets, uh, how have they done in camp, maybe some less happy news for a couple of guys. Uh, But if you're a Winnipeg fan, let's be real, right? October 20th against the Pittsburgh Penguins is circled on your calendar. But guess what? Rucker McCordy may not be in the lineup against the Jets at that time because it sounds like Pittsburgh is not exactly loving his performance in preseason and camp so far. Uh, He is still with the team as far as I know, last I saw. But from what I've heard, um, you know, the coaching staff had some feedback that suggests that Rucker may not be ready. Uh, In fact, the the speed issue, whether it's his skating or the processing speed at the NHL level, Both of those appear to be something of a challenge for him right now, which, hey, guess what? That's probably something as to what the Jets were thinking, too. Not to say that the Jets made the right decision not to even give him a chance in a lineup spot, but sometimes when it comes to this sort of stuff, especially if you're playing for a big playoff run, you know, it's harder to give the rookies room to grow and and understand and adapt to the game, especially when you're late in the season and you think that you have a shot at earning a higher seed. And with Rucker, I I sort of had mixed feelings, right? On the one hand, I don't disagree that the Jets have traditionally had some issues with giving young players a chance to make the lineup. That's an old habit. It's something that has historically haunted this team. And it's why, you know, for the last six or seven years, ever since 2017, 2018, Winnipeg really hasn't had as many players go from uh, the pipeline to the actual NHL. So, In many respects, I agreed with Rucker there, but I think the way that he went about it, you know, holding out of camp, coming up with all of these strange excuses as to why he didn't want to sign, all this stuff just kind of like turned me off of wanting him to uh, wanting to see him in a Winnipeg uniform. So, um, you know, sometimes the grass ain't always greener when you depart and go elsewhere, because as it turns out, he's finding that, you know what, the Penguins can't fly either. Uh, He, you know, left a team that has jets as a theme and now he's going to be going with the flightless penguins down to the baby penguins team uh i guess you know the the trip down to uh wilkesbury scranton is not going to be that fun but you know what every player at some point in their career has probably had to play in a lower league first uh the nhl skill barrier is extremely high right now and i i think for me you know i'd just be grateful in that situation to get a shot you know, I, I know that Rucker is eager to make his name in the NHL, and there's some, like, earning implications with it. But by the same token, he did kind of come from a rawer spot than some other prospects. And so immediate success is not guaranteed for him. Now, I want to chat a little bit about that and how that may relate to Braden Yager as well in just a moment. But before we go any further, just wanted to let you know that tonight's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Now, like I said, uh, as far as the Jets are concerned, you know, Braden Yager looks to be uh, a, a guy who I think is probably closer to ready than not. Um, he's a little bit younger than Rucker. Uh, he has had less higher level experience. You know, collegiate is is pretty good these days. And with Rucker having been with Michigan, you could argue that's probably a better spot to be than Red Deer uh, in some ways. But what I will say about Jagger is that <clears throat> when I watch Jagger versus some of McGrady's footage, you know, the impression that I come away with is that uh, Rucker might not actually be as far along as Jaeger is. Jaeger seems to be defensively mature. I think his two-way game is a little sharper. 
I think as a complete player, Jagger does have the ability to maybe surpass Rucker in some areas. But, and I say this as a very big caveat, you know, his game may not have as much offensive punch, right? And so you sort of have a bit of a give and take, right? If you have Jaeger as like your, your, your like middle six center, who's maybe a little more defensively responsible, but perhaps doesn't score as much, would you prefer that versus McGordy, who's got a lethal shot and is just a bully towards the net? I think that there's a really fair trade-off to ask. And for the Jets, you know, quite frankly, Jagger kind of fits our pipeline a little more because we just don't have that many centers with a lot of upside. I mean, we do have some guys, but on the whole, I think for the most part, the Jets have sort of uh, lacked a little bit of punch down the middle, and Jagger could potentially fill in some of that gap. But I think the main thing to take away is that, you know, sometimes when a prospect doesn't appear to be ready and a team has that assessment, they may actually be right about it. Um, you know, recently I've given the Jets a little more benefit of the doubt than I would have in previous years. I think the Jets have smartened up in some ways, and it does seem like they are increasingly thinking about things from maybe a better lens or a better perspective. I wouldn't say that they've gotten everything right, but I think if you look at how they've approached the soft season and some of the moves that they've made, I think they've earned more of the benefit of the doubt than, you know, some of the criticism that I've seen. Not that I don't think the team does deserve criticism at times. Absolutely, right? They're not perfect. They are, are certainly not claiming to be anymore. And I think, you know, the last several years have really shown the Jets how far off they were as an organization from really being among the, the league's elite. And I don't mean that to be disparaging, but like, I'm just being honest, the Jets weren't really that close. And, you know, I think a lot of the talent on this team has masked how far the Jets were away from some of those top end contenders, but it's not like you can't get there. And I think part of the challenge for the Jets is balancing the need to make the playoffs, earn that good revenue, and, and maybe not piss off some of your veterans by dealing with a kid who might be a little high on his own supply. And I think in, in Rucker's case, I don't necessarily think it's just him. In fact, you know, I, I wouldn't be shocked if he just got really bad advice and his agent was really pushing for all of this. Maybe Rucker himself wasn't really that interested or, or didn't care as much, but he sort of went along with what his agent's advising him to do. And that's how it ended up in the situation. But you know, it does seem like the Jets might have been right about him. Uh, Winnipeg seems to have found a, a bit of a, you know, hardworking two-way gem that I think is going to fit Winnipeg's culture and style of play better in Jaeger. And McCrory honestly is ending up in the same place that he would have been had he stayed a Jet. He probably would have started with the Moose. I really don't think that would have been an insult either. I mean, I think it just means that, you know, the, the, the Jets have a pretty full roster. And with him, he's got some rawness to his skating in his game that's going to take time to get up to speed at the NHL level. Now, that's not to say that he wouldn't make the Jets out of camp. Maybe he would. Maybe he'd do a more impressive job for Winnipeg than he did for um, the Penguins, but given like the Pens roster, if he's not making Pittsburgh, he's probably not making the Jets either. So uh, on the whole, you know, I, I think that trade and, and maybe the whole organizational turn sort of ended the way it was supposed to. But I think it also serves as a cautionary tale that, you know what, you, you may want out, you may think that this is a better option. Your agent may be trying to convince you that leaving is the best choice to get a spot. But you know what, sometimes the grass ain't greener on the other side. You know, the Jets, for all of their criticisms and, and faults and things, they are functionally very similar to many other NHL teams. And the stuff that the Jets might have issues with, other teams are going to find fault with too. You know, they may give him a little more leash than the, than the Jets did, but that doesn't mean that it's a, you know, a, a, a guaranteed spot immediately. And I think we're seeing that very clearly with how Pittsburgh has handled his development track uh, through the first couple of games in, in, in training camp. So, Something to keep an eye on, something to keep in mind, because this probably won't be the last prospect that the Jets have to deal with, uh, you know, perhaps not wanting to sign or, or stay in Winnipeg. But so far, if anything, I think the Jets have shown that they can maneuver through some of these issues. And hey, maybe they're even right about some of their assessments when it comes to a player's readiness. So um, if that's the case, and if they're really getting smarter about prospects and knowing when to get them up to speed at the NHL level, I think that that, you know, bodes well for how Winnipeg is going to manage its roster going forward, at least with the prospects. We'll have to figure out the veteran side uh, soon enough. Now, in news that's less happy, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about Patrick Liney, who 
unfortunately has had his season, you know, halfway derailed before it's even gotten off the ground. We'll chat about that in just a quick moment. But before we go too much further, did want to shout out our friends and partners at Game Time. When it comes to buying tickets, a lot of you are probably used to paying extraordinary fees and surprise charges that you weren't really anticipating. You open up a, uh, a shopping cart after you've added a ticket, and the final price looks like you're paying for two or three tickets, and you're only buying one. Game Time totally knows how much that sucks, and that's why they want to help you save time and money with their great service. Game Time has a great feature called Game Time Picks that filters out all the fluff only to show you the best deals for the hottest seats. So you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets for the event that you want. And when you toggle in all-in pricing, you can see what you're paying up front from the start. No hidden charges, no hidden fees, and you even get to see some of seat views before you buy. And it all comes back with their lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, and so much more. Game Time wants to help curate deals to make it find the, uh, to make it easier to find the best deals and save time and money. So if you're ready to take the guesswork out of buying tickets, download the Game Time app right now, create an account, and be sure to use promo code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-O for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Hey, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we're just chatting about some early preseason stuff. And I thought tonight would be kind of interesting to follow up on a couple of former Jets, seeing how those uh, those guys have handled things and how they're up, to, how they're doing. And you know, with Rucker McCordy getting uh, sent down to the Baby Moose sometime in the near future, that does seem like that's happening. Uh, obviously, <clears throat> he's not the only former Jet that's been experiencing some level of adversity in preseason. Patrick Liney, I, I think pretty much all of us can agree, has a, a very big soft spot in many of our hearts. Uh, his signing and, and trade to uh, Montreal obviously was a bit of a gut punch for me personally. Uh, some of you probably don't care as much, but I know for me that one was a, a, a tough one to see uh, kind of slip away from Winnipeg in some way. It's especially hard knowing what Line has gone through recently. I'm sure that he was to some degree close to Goudreau and you know now Johnny is passed and uh, that whole tragedy has happened. And on top of that, Line was already dealing with um, you know mental health issues before departing the Blue Jackets. And so, you know, coming to the Montreal Canadiens or wherever else he was going to, to tr get traded to was really supposed to be a fresh start. And just a few games in the preseason, uh, his knee has been taken out by a, a Toronto uh, Marley skater, Pare, Pare, I think his name is. Um, it was a knee-on-knee -knee contact. It looked pretty deliberate to me. I don't really know that there's much arguing that. And line A is out anywhere from four to six months at a minimum right now, which it just sucks, man. If, if ever there was a player who deserved better than to have to go through all of this, it's line A. You know, you might not have enjoyed some of the stuff that he did on the ice, but in terms of a guy who just seems like a genuinely good person and, you know, has really advocated for mental health and, you know, seemingly was was getting his life and everything back on track, it just... It, it's a really terrible setback, and it's it's a shame that it has to happen for somebody just trying to make a name and get on the radar of Toronto's front office. And I've seen a lot of people talking about it as an, you know a, a good sign as to why preseason shouldn't happen. Uh, for me, you know, preseason is kind of important as a tune-up, but you know if they shorten preseason, I don't think people would be particularly upset. Would it probably hurt the product to start the season? Yes, most likely. Uh, you would probably see <clears throat> maybe some rougher games, maybe some sloppier play to start the year, but perhaps you'd have less stupid stuff like this over games that don't have a meaningful impact on the standings. So uh, line A season kind of ending before it's even began just really, really sucks. Uh, you know, I, I don't quite know what the severity of his injury is. The speculation so far is that it is pretty serious and could even, you know, require maybe some surgery, some rehab of some sort. I've had, you know, a, a pretty nasty knee injury and mine wasn't even like crazy. It was just like a meniscus tear and it took me months to, to get back, you know, on my feet. And so I can only imagine for like a pro hockey player, uh, any sort of serious knee injury that, you know, you, you have to rely upon in order to, you know, generate power and get up to speed. Just, it's going to have a serious 
uh, impact on your ability to recover and, and do all the stuff. And it's not like Liney is the healthiest person. He has gotten hurt before. Um, don't recall if he's ever had like serious lower body injuries like this, but you know, it's just a shame. I, I wish things had turned out differently and it kind of makes his departure for Montreal and not the Jets even more painful because it feels like he could have avoided that had he gone to another team. But you know, it is what it is. It, you know, I, I say that, but really it can happen on any team, especially when you're in preseason, somebody knows you're the star new player on the, on a squad, they will take a run at you and it's a shame. Um, but I think, you know, the, the, the good news for Liney is that it doesn't sound like his season is entirely over. It's just, I mean, for the Habs, man, that's got to be brutal. You, you thought that you were bringing in a top to your name, a guy who could be a huge boost to your top six and make the team fun to watch again. And before the season even starts, you've already lost him for most of the year. So um, brutal blow. I, I, I know, how, you know, Liney is a tough guy and he's, probably ready to to go through this whole process but man if i were in his position and i had gone through something similar you know i i can't imagine sort of the thoughts running through my mind after battling through so much just to get to this point to begin with i guess the one i don't know if i can call this positive but uh better thing i i guess is that you saw arbor shikai obviously um stand up for for Liney. i don't particularly care for the way that arbor went about it but you know, in the heat of the moment, it's really hard to blame him for how he reacted, uh, jumping on the back of of Pare and and, and kind of going to town and wailing on him. So, you know, on the whole, uh, it really should have been a situation that was avoided if the referees had done their job. But it appears that that didn't really happen. And so the players kind of took justice into their own hands, which we all know that that doesn't always go that well uh, when it comes to league players and discipline. So something to keep in mind and, and keep an eye out for. but. I guess, if anything, I just hope that the Jets don't experience any sort of situation like this. You know, crossing fingers, no major injuries, nothing like that. We've already had some bad injuries uh, in camp that weren't even really player injury related. Like it was just stuff that I guess either cropped up during camp or, you know, in Hanula's case, an unlucky um, post-surgery infection. So, you know, thankfully nobody's sticking their knee out or concussing one of our guys. Uh, which is always a, a little bit of a risk. So, you know, I, I guess for the Jets, it, it does kind of suck. You know, you see guys that have maybe departed for greener pastures, and I wish, you know, for Lion A, things had already worked out going to Montreal, but to see him already face this stuff early, man, sometimes I just feel like I, I wish he would just come home. Um, I wish he would just come back to the Jets. You know, it's it's a little bit selfish. It's obviously a little unrealistic, but if there was a guy who I would love to have seen back in Winnipeg at some point, it would have been line A. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, he he really didn't have many choices of places to go. And I think Habs fans would have taken good care of him. So I can only hope that they give him a warm welcome when he's ready to take the ice uh, this upcoming season. But in happier news um, for a former Jet, there is one that will be making a return to Winnipeg, and that's Brian, Brian Little signing a one-day contract. Uh, he is going to have a, a sort of um, honorary retirement game on October 20th. That, I think, was, <laughs> I don't know if it was intentional for the whole thing of sending a message to Rucker about loyalty and, and being respectful, but it, it seems like Rucker may not even play that game. I feel like the Pens are going to bring him in somehow anyways, but uh, if he's not, he's going to miss a great ceremony for a guy who quite honestly deserved you know all the accolades, all the attention. Sometimes I think I, I was too harsh on, on Little or perhaps didn't appreciate his game until it was gone, right? Uh, once he had that injury and, and suddenly that 2C void opened up on this team, it's just very obvious to see his absence in the squad and how hard it was for the Jets to replace him. Uh, it took, you know, Winnipeg searching for guys like Paul Stastny to, uh, to really fill that void, and that wasn't actually that easy. So, you know, for the Jets... It's going to be a really nice night. Little is honestly one of those guys that, in hindsight, I probably view him as one of my favorite, uh, you know, thrashers holdovers in terms of underrated players who just brought a, a sharp offensive game and constantly created good chances. Little was one of those every down sort of, uh, I don't know if you can really call him like homegrown necessarily, but I, I, I guess in, in the sense of like the Jets having come from another place, 
you could kind of call him like a homegrown player. I mean, he basically stuck with the Jets for his, you know, uh, or some iteration of this franchise for his entire career. And so, yeah, you know, I, I, I think Winnipeg can feel comfortable ish claiming him to a degree. So, uh, Brian Little, you know, getting to retire a jet, I think is going to be really nice. I hope that, you know, health wise, things have been going better for him. That injury that he had was very serious, a little scary. And, you know, I, I just hope that he hasn't had lingering impacts from it because, like, the, the concussion stuff and some of that balance stuff that happens when you get hit in the head with a puck, it's, it's pretty scary. But seems like he's been doing better. Um, I think there's been maybe one or two appearances, maybe a couple more that he's had at some of the games, but it'll just be nice. You know, I think the Jets could use like a good vibe evening. It would have been really funny if Rucker was playing that game, and I actually hope that he does. It'd be great to to kind of show how the Jets can really honor and, and treasure a player who meant a lot to the franchise and show it to a guy who thought that he was better than this team in some respects. So uh, overall, you know, we'll see how that pans out, but you know, October 20th should be a really nice night either way, whether, whether McGordy is playing or not, you get to honor little, you get to say farewell to one of our, uh, early franchise legends. And hopefully, you know, Jagger is going to fill in that void and become the next Brian little. Now, amidst all of this, uh, outside of the jets, there's been some very interesting stuff in it. It actually makes you appreciate Connor Hellebuck a little more. I know that his preseason start perhaps didn't go according to plan, uh, but we all know that Helly is going to be fine during the regular season. The guy is just a rock, and this team is really founded on him. But if you're looking for elite goalies out there who still need a contract, boy, oh boy, are you probably happy that you are not in the Boston Bruins camp. They have a very dicey situation with Swayman, um, and the Swayman contract negotiations appear to have hit a bit of a, well, how should we say, iceberg. Uh, we'll chat about what that looks like and why it you know, makes the, the Hellebuck contract so much more comfortable for the Jets in just a little bit. Before we go too much further, though, did want to shout out our friends and partners at FanDuel. NFL fans, you can start the season with a big kick return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. For those of you who have been watching the first few weeks of action, you might actually be watching Dolphins Titans right now. And if you are, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know what the odds uh, for this game coming into this evening were for no touchdowns uh, to be scored by the quarterbacks. But if you had that on your, um, your your bingo card, it looks like you are about to get it. There's only been like one or two touchdowns, I think, this whole game. And it was all rushing as far as I understand. So uh, yeah, man. Wow. Uh, not exactly the most exciting of evenings uh, if you are a a football fan, but maybe you're a Vikings fan. You're loving the defense. Maybe you're rooting for the commanders and their crazy start. Or maybe you're like me and a Ravens fan, which I know there's somebody out there listening from Rockville. Yeah, you know, it, it's been a good start to the season after a bit of a rough patch. Derrick Henry looks like he's on pace to do stuff. But, you know, as we're watching these games and we're getting into all the action, you might start getting a bit of a hunch, right? You're getting a feeling about Minnesota's defensive structure. Maybe you think they're about to uh, either shut down an opponent or have a rare blip. Whatever it is, though, with FanDuel, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets so you'll always stay up to date with the latest action from your favorite team. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's all at FanDuel.com or on the mobile app. Hey friends, and welcome back to tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, as we are just closing out with some final thoughts. Uh, obviously, it's been an interesting couple of days for the Jets and for the league, for the league at large. Uh, former Winnipeg players may be experiencing some, some struggles and, in some cases, really frustrating injuries. But in another case that's outside of Winnipeg, but perhaps makes you appreciate Connor Hellebuck's extension last summer all that much more, uh, Jeremy Swayman is locked in a very nasty dispute with the Boston Bruins, and holy cow, man, uh, the Bruins basically put him on blast today in a press conference saying he had 64 million reasons to be suiting up for Boston this season. Uh, Swayman's camp does not appear to, to have taken that very nicely, and if I were in Swayman's shoes, I probably wouldn't be happy about that either. Um, I think Swayman was probably asking for like 10 plus on his next contract. I think he wanted to be one of the highest paid young goalies in the league. And, you know, sure, the sample size for him isn't exactly crazy, but given his age and, you know, the early to mid 20s, uh, the, the lack of high end starters out there and his overall performance 
uh, behind that Bruins defense, you'd, you'd probably think he was in the neighborhood for a, a big extension and raise. But it seems like the Bruins were offering him 8 by 8 Sounds like he said no. And uh, that has resulted in a really nasty stalemate that does kind of threaten to spill over. Now, allegedly, Swayman does want to play for the Bruins. And maybe that in and of itself is true. But at the end of the day, it does get to be a business. And if you're the Bruins and you have a goalie who just isn't accepting a huge contract, you know, I, I don't quite know what you do there just because um, for, for Boston, they kind of need to rebuild soon. And like Swayman probably wouldn't get you like a huge return, especially since he's holding out a bit right now. But if you were to maybe move his rights to another squad, you know, what could a return like that look like? And I, I don't know. Uh, but I, I think that that's probably not in their consideration at all. I would imagine that they are like reserving that sort of move as like an absolute last ditch, no other option choice. Cause like the Bruins don't really have a lot up front uh, to sort of compensate if they lose one of the best goalies in the league. You know, their offense is not great. Marchand is probably closer to retiring. Bergeron's gone, um, you know, and, and Pasternak and McAvoy and some of the other skaters can only carry so much of this load. You know, you've got some good defenders, you've got some great forwards, and after that, things kind of fall off considerably. And so Swayman, I would have imagined, would have been a really big part of whatever it was that they're expecting to do this season. But without him, uh, I would have to imagine that that becomes a much, much, much harder proposition. So if you're the jet, or if you're like, um, if you're if you're one of these squads out there that's kind of looking for like a top end goalie, and thankfully that's not the Jets. Winnipeg has theirs uh, locked up for the for the long term and the future. It is very interesting to see that uh, you know elite goaltending continues to be a bit of a bugbear for some of these teams. There was a thought for a while, and and perhaps there is still still some value uh, to this idea, but like going with like a one A one B sort of timeshare thing might have been you know better for some teams that don't want to, you know, like slap all of their cap space into one goalie. But with Swayman, yeah, you might have to just pay the dude. Um, you don't really have many better options. And if you're hoping that Olmark or somebody else like that, uh, of that sort of caliber, um, I think in this case, it's going to be Corpus Allo now because Olmark's gone. So uh, Corpus Allo, I, I don't know what he's going to be like, but uh, if, you're, if you're the Bruins, all I can say is good luck. Um, the drop off from, you know, swam into a corpus solo type is pretty precipitous. And uh, all I can say is, you know, for whatever concerns I may have about a guy like Kakanen or or Comrie perhaps backing up Hellebuck, let me tell you when it really doesn't worry me too much when your starter is is Connor freaking Hellebuck. For all of his playoff struggles, there's just no one else that I would trust with uh, my playoff series more than Connor at this point. So, yeah. Uh, it is nice to not have to worry about this stuff, but it is fascinating to watch other teams go through these struggles with their star young goalies. What do you think he'll sign for? Give me your prediction for Swayman's next deal in the comments below or at my social medias at HL Living Loco. At the uh, same time, let me know if you're going to that October 20th Pens game. Do you think Rucker will play? Are you expecting to boo him? Uh, what sort of Winnipeg welcome do you want to give our former spoiled child prospect? Let me know in the comments below again or at my social medias, like I said, at HL Living Loco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. For tonight's episode, though, that is going to be all the time that we have. I thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. Tomorrow, we might have some preview coverage of Wednesday's preseason game. But, you know, this is winding down for uh, the, the preseason. We're almost ready for actual, real, meaningful hockey again. And uh, all I can say is I am excited to get the year underway. But for tonight's episode, that is all the time that we have. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great night. And as always, go Jets go.